Hello, my name is Olivia Romer. I am a Sage Certified Consultant at TAG, a premier Sage partner for construction software with a team of experts in construction accounting and software solutions. Today, I am going to give you a demo overview of Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate. As you see here, this is the Sage 300 desktop. Within the desktop, you have all your applications. These are all the modules that you own. If you don't own a module, it will not appear on this application bar here. You also have your favorites menu. Your favorites menu is customized to each individual user, and it's easy to change and modify your favorites. All you have to do is come here, click on favorites, look at the applications, pick the tasks that you want to do. In this example, I'm going to say print checks. I'm going to grab that task, pull it, and put it into my subfolder. Now I have two items in there, entering invoices and printing checks. Once I save it, now I have both items in. When I click on it, it launches me into the window to complete that action. Now I'm going to go into the applications themselves. I'm going to start with project management. Since Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate is a construction specific accounting software program, I want to show you everything that's available that's specific to job costing. So within an inquiry here in project management, I'm going to show you the job overview inquiry. Within this inquiry, I can see all my active projects and pretty much most of the information that I would want to know about a job. What my original contract is, if I have any pending change orders, what my total approved change orders are, my revised contract amount, my total revised estimate, my total commitments. Commitments are subcontracts and purchase orders. My job to date costs, what the system calculates as my cost at completion, my anticipated profit on this job, what I've billed to date, and how many RFIs, submittals, drawings, meeting minutes, and transmittals I've issued on this project. What I like about the inquiries is their drill down functionality. For example, if I want to know what makes up this $19,000 in pending change orders, all I have to do is double click. Now I can see it's change orders 1, 2, 3, 6, and 14. These are really overdue, so I should probably try and contact someone to get these collected. Any of the fields you see can be double-clicked so you can get more detailed information. The other feature of inquiries is this export to Excel. By clicking on this button here, I can export all the information that you see here on the screen into Microsoft Excel, keeping all of its formatting. Now, if I want to run some pivot tables or some graphs on the data that I exported, I can do so. Next, I want to show you the two main features of project management, documents and contract control. Within documents, you have all your typical construction type documents, transmittals, drawing logs, meeting minutes, RFIs, submittals, field or daily reports, and you also have custom logs as well. Within contract control, you have your contract. This would be your contract with your customer. Commitments, which are subcontracts and purchase orders. Change requests, change orders, and commitment change orders. You can also enter in your budgets, enter in miscellaneous worksheet items, and your subcontractor compliance management, which we'll get to in a few. Also within project management, I can set up my job, add a company or a person to my software address book, add standard spec sections, and I can also create custom logs. There are over 1,100 inquiries in reports that come standard with Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate. 
So let's see how a change order works. So I'm gonna open up a change order here for Clackamas Office Park. And here I'm going to pull this change order number three. So as you notice here, there are three change requests that are added to this change order. The way the software operates is my customer requests that I give them a price on a change. I then create a change request for that particular request. In this example, the customer asked to remove some trees at the northwest corner of the lot. I put how many days it was going to impact my schedule and that it was in relation to an RFI. If you wanted any more additional information, I could put that here. So this was initiated by Stuart West of Northwest Landscaping. And it's in regards to item 19 on my contract. On the price cost estimate tab, I can enter the price to my customer, the cost to me, and if I need to get a subcontractor or material provider involved. In this case, this is going to impact our contract with Northwest Landscape. Now that the customer has given me a verbal approval, I can add it to a change order that they can then sign. I decide when I want the change order to adjust my contract amount or when I want it to update my job budget. Typical in the construction industry, we usually perform work on a job before actually receiving the signed change order. So I might wanna update my budget before actually revising my contract amount. You have the capability to do so. I can choose to send this directly out of the software. It sends it through my out Microsoft Outlook email as a PDF attachment. I can also add attachments to this as well. Perhaps it's drawings or photos that I need to send along with this change order. If I'd like to send a physical copy, I can come in here and print them. So here is an example of one of the canned change orders. Here it has my job, the change order number, my name, the three change requests, and the total price to my customer, what my original contract was, my previous change orders, the net amount prior to these new change orders, the total of my new change orders, and my new proposed revised contract. It also has a place for the architect to sign, me to sign, and my customer to sign. Any of these forms can be changed and modified to look the way your current change orders look. Now let's take a look at how the commitment function performs. I click here on commitments and it opens up my commitment screen. So here I have a commitment that was done previously. This is for a purchase order. On this purchase order, I have two line items going to two different cost codes. This is for materials, so I've put the total units. In this example, I have tons and cubic yards. I also have put the total cost per unit for these two line items of materials. If I needed to, I could calculate tax based on where I set up the job location or perhaps where the material may be delivered. After I've entered all the information, I have a couple of choices. I can add the scope of work here. I can put the schedule. I can put insurance information for that supplier. I can add checklists for things like if a payment bond has been received or required when the contract was issued and signed, who would be signing on my behalf and on the subcontractor or supplier's behalf. If I have any inclusions or exclusions I need to add to this purchase order. If there are any secondary vendors involved in this transaction, if they have sent a preliminary notice, I can record that information here. And then last but not least, I can create my purchase order using the document designer. When I click on the document designer, this box here pops up. I have several templates here that I'm able to use.
Since I am issuing a purchase order, I'm going to pick my purchase order template. You can create as many different templates as you'd like. And here is my purchase order. This is just a standard Word document, and I've chosen which fields in Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate I want it to fill within this form. This can be customized and changed to look however you'd like. I also have the ability to keep track of my construction document. For example, let's take a look here at RFIs. Here I have an RFI that's already been filled out. It's RFI number seven. Here I wanna know if we need to move forward on the removal of the excluded trees. I also have my answer that a change order is on the way. There is a verbal okay to move forward. If I wanted to, I could send this again using a integration with Microsoft Outlook, or I could print and actually send a physical copy as well. Again, any forms that you see here can be changed and modified to look however you desire. I can also send this with a transmittal just by clicking this button, or I can change this RFI into a change request. I have many options available to me. Now let's take a look at some of the standard job cost reports. Here in project management, I'm gonna to go to reports and cost control and job costs by cost code. Here you can see one of the standard job cost reports that come with the software. In this particular report, I can see Clackamas Office Park. I can see all the cost codes that are related to this particular project. So I have a group of general condition cost codes, some site work cost codes, some concrete cost codes, et cetera, et cetera. In here, this report is showing me what my original budget was, if I had any approved change orders that modified my budget in any way, what my new revised budget is, any commitments I had against these particular cost codes, again, commitments or subcontracts or purchase orders, my job to date costs by cost code, and my remaining costs, which is calculated by my total estimate minus my job to date costs. Another great report is my subcontract log with detail. In this particular report, I can see all of the subcontracts I have on Clackamas Office Park. So I have this one here for fire protection from sprinkler contractors, plumbing from Kingston Plumbing, some HVAC from Jackson Heating and Air Conditioning, electrical with A1 Electric, and the cost codes associated with their subcontracts. I can also see the original subcontract, if I have any pending or approved change orders with them, what the revised amount of their subcontract is, and how much I've been invoiced by that sub against these two contract items, how much I've held in retainage, and how much payment I've actually issued them against their subcontract agreements. Another great feature inside of Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate is the subcontractor compliance management. This tool is a great way for you to keep track of all your subcontractors and suppliers. Here I can keep track of lien waivers, unconditional and conditional, progress and final, certified reports, insurance certificates, and any miscellaneous items. Miscellaneous can be any type of items that you want to keep track of on your subcontractors or suppliers. Anything like city business licenses or punch lists. Maybe they need certain certifications or they need to be a certain type of business to be able to perform work on this particular job. Any item that doesn't fall within the category of lien waivers, certified reports, or insurance can be kept track of in the miscellaneous tab. Another great option is you can have the software automatically email a report to your vendors, letting them know if they have outstanding lien releases or other items. That way you can make sure that you're communicating with them and it'll help them to receive payment on time. Within Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate, you have a full billing package. 
inside here, I can do progress-based billings or cost-based billings or quick bills, which are essentially quick little invoices where I write out the description and the amount. Here in contract-based invoices, I have an invoice are based on a schedule of values that I create within my contract. I can also have the contract hold retention based on information that I set up. I can also decide to bill based on percentage or total amount. So here I can either do 50% and then it calculates the amount for me, or I can put the amount here and it'll calculate the percentage for me. Notice how it's calculating the retainage held based on the information set up. Final step is to put the period through date on my invoice. And then the last thing I need to do is print. As you can see, the invoice looks very similar to the AIA G702 in G703 form. Here I have my summary form at the top that gives my contract totals with changes, what I've billed and received. And then on the second page, I have my schedule of values. I can also do cost-based billings as well. Within here, all the information is pulled from payroll and accounts payable and job costs of any cost that I have associated with this job. As you can see, all the unbilled costs are listed here. I can choose whether or not I want to bill an item, whether or not I want to change the amount to be billed, or if I just want to delete an item from the list. This will pull the billing amount based on the rate and markup tables that I have set up on this particular job. Here is my cost-based invoice. I have everything separated by category, labor, material, equipment, sub, etc. Here I can see the description and the employee that worked on this particular job. So here I had an equipment operator, a mason, and then another individual that was not in a certified class. I have two material invoices that I'm billing as well. One from Northwest Concrete, the other from Oregon Lumber Specialties. I'm also charging them for some of my equipment. I have a Caterpillar dozer and a Komatsu dozer that I used on this particular project. Any of these invoice formats can be changed or modified to look however you desire. Within Accounts Receivable, I can view my Accounts Receivable Aging. In here, I can see by customer and contract all my outstanding invoices, where they stand, whether it's current, 30, 60, 90, or 120, and how much retainage is being held on each invoice by project. If I'd like to, I even have the ability to send a statement to each one of my customers with their outstanding invoices. Within Accounts Payable, I can enter in all my invoices. It opens up the grid here. By using lookup functions, I can find the exact vendor I wanna use, and it'll pop up any warnings. Here in this example, this particular vendor has insurance that has expired. If I want more details, I can click here. If I've received updated information, I can come here or based on settings, I can choose to ignore it. In this example, we're going to ignore. I'm going to enter in the invoice, the date of the invoice, amount. If any sales tax needed to be calculated on it, it would calculate it here or if I have the vendor set up to receive any discounts, those would calculate based on the settings I have on the vendor setup screen. The description of the invoice, the payment date is calculating based on the vendor setup. If any discounts were set up, the discount date would be set up. Then I have my accounting date. The accounting date is very different from the invoice date. The accounting date tells the software which accounting period you want this cost to hit. For example, perhaps I got this invoice very late and I've already run my financials for August. I no longer want this invoice to hit my August general ledger because my financial statements have been finalized. So instead, I can change my accounting date to reflect the new period in which I want these costs to hit. Then the bottom grid, which is called the distribution grid, appears. Here, I can enter in the commitment. So this would be the subcontractor purchase order number. 
If I don't know which one it is, I can hit the list button here or F4 and it'll list all the commitments that I have with this vendor. Oh yes, it's this one here. Now I can pick the particular line item that I want to apply this invoice to. Oh, it's for this line item. Oh, wait a second, they have insurance certificates and lien waivers that are out of compliance. Oh, I do know about those and I have those. So I'm just gonna ignore, I'll update that later. It pulls my job, cost code, and category information directly from the commitment that I entered. It also pulls my gen general ledger account based on the information I have set up. It's warning me that I'm posting this to a future period. I know that and I'm okay with that. Oh wait, they're trying to invoice me for more than the amount of the invoice. Hmm, is this correct? I can choose to hit okay or I can cancel and find out if I need to enter in a change order or perhaps this is against the wrong commitment. Based on security settings, I can hit okay or I would be stopped right now and won't be able to continue until modifications have been made. Based on what I've set up, it's automatically calculating any retained inch that needs to be held on this invoice. Oh, I need to do a joint check on this invoice. I can hit the button here and put who I need to joint with. Now when I pay this invoice, it will provide a joint check with ABC material. Now I'm finished with this invoice and can proceed to the next invoice. I also have various reports that I can use to see what's going on with my payables. Here I'm going to look at an invoice aging. Here I can see by vendor the total amount of outstanding invoices that I have and how much retention I have held for each vendor. Next is payroll. Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate offers a full functioning payroll module to their construction accounting software suite. Within payroll, I can handle payroll for union employees and on certified jobs. All I have to do is set up my unions, the type of fringes, pays, and deductions those union classes receive, and when any increases may be required. Based on information that I set up, it will automatically pull the correct union that is used on a job or the correct certified class might be required. Sage offers a full functioning construction accounting payroll suite. Within here, I can handle payroll internally for all my employees, whether they're union or they work on certified jobs. Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate Payroll can handle it all. I can even print all my certified reports directly out of the software. I can handle all my ACA reporting and all my tax filings as well. To do so, I come here under tasks, pick whether I'm filing for the state or federal. Here I'm doing federal because I have a Davis-Bacon wage job that I need to submit certified payroll reports for. As you can see here, it's pulled up the official Department of Labor certified report. It's pulled in all my employees that worked on this particular job, what their classification was, the hours worked, their rate of pay, any taxes withheld or deductions, etc. All I have to do is print and send. Many of the state certified reports are also within Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate. I can even e-file some of the state forms. For example, here in California, we must e-file the certified report. Notice it says here, this report is e-file only. This will submit the necessary file to the California DIR. No additional work required from your end. The last item we're going to view today is General Ledger. Within General Ledger, I can view my financial statements, make journal entries, look at particular transactions in detail to learn more information if necessary. Here I'm going to print my financial statements. Here in the box, I have a couple different financial statement packages. I'm going to pick my standard package. On the rollback button, I can choose to print either current month or previous month financial statements. 
I have the option to print a consolidated financial statement or a financial statement for individual companies. In this particular example, I have three different companies within my data set. I want to run a consolidated financial statement that consolidates all three companies together so I can see how we're operating. Here is my standard balance sheet and my standard income statement and my standard trial balance. These financial statement forms can be changed and modified to have additional information. I also have the option to run my financial statements into Excel. Here you can see my trial balance, balance sheet, and profit and loss. Here on the brackets, if I double click them, it'll show me all the transactions that make up that total. I also have the option to do an entity by entity comparison. Here you can see I have two of my companies together, side by side, and the total that the two companies create. Now I can see how each of my companies doing compared to one another. Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate can also alert you of certain events that you pick. For example, I asked it to tell me when I have unapproved change requests. As you can see here, the system has emailed me a list of all my unapproved change orders by job, the date that they were issued, and the amount. I also asked it to send me a list of vendors with expired general liability insurance in the next 30 days. Here they've listed all my vendors, who to contact, a phone number if it was in my vendor setup, and the expiration date of their insurance. Here I asked for lien waivers not received within 30 days from my vendors. Here you can see the job, the commitment, and who the vendor is. In this example, I asked it to show me any jobs that are over budget by more than $500. You're really limited to your imagination on what the system can alert you to. It can also send you reports at specified time to specified individuals. And that was a brief overview of Sage 300 Construction and Real Estate. If you'd like to learn more about the software, or get a demo for yourself, please contact us at sales at teamtag.net or you can visit our website at www.teamtag.net. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe to our channel.